The much awaited and much delayed Tesla Semi has been out on the streets for the better part of a year now, and with its first customer PepsiCo regularly using its fleet for routes as long as 450 miles. This means we are closer than ever to answering a very important question. Can an electric Semi actually make real world sense? Battery electric vehicles have been a hugely significant move toward reducing greenhouse gas emissions from the transportation sector for a cleaner and greener future. Cars like the Tesla Model 3 and Model Y have now made it to the top 10 best-selling cars in the world, indicating the move to zero emissions passenger vehicles has gathered momentum and is well and truly underway. But consumer vehicles aren't the only polluters on the road. Larger commercial transport vehicles have mostly slipped under the radar, but their size and weight makes them far worse on fuel economy, and that's not a good thing for our greener intentions for the environment. So it makes sense that after the revolution Tesla single-handedly kicked off with electric cars, they now offer the full electric Tesla Semi for commercial application. And with the first batch of trucks now loose on the streets, it begs the question, will the Tesla Semi revolutionize the trucking industry toward a cleaner and greener future, or is it just a marketing gimmick? Whether you call them semis, big rigs, or 18-wheelers, there's no denying how important they are to industry. In the United States alone, around 4 million semis drive a combined 400 billion miles, yes, with a B, every year. They move about 72% of all freight, accounting for over 8 hundred billion US dollars, yes, with a B again, in gross freight revenue. They are clearly vital to any nation's industry, but there is a dark side to this impressive feat. While doing all of the aforementioned transport, they also burn over 40 billion gallons combined in fossil fuels annually to make all these trips. And even though they are just 1% of vehicles on the road, they make up 20% of total vehicle emissions. And thus began Tesla's endeavor to provide a solution for this sector of the transport industry. Developing a fully electric Tesla Semi poses a set of unique challenges though, and in this video we shall explore them one at a time. Let's start with the battery. While electric motors are a fraction of the weight of their combustion engine counterparts, batteries ensure electric vehicles remain really, really heavy. For example, the Ford F-150 pickup truck weighs four to 5,000 pounds depending on its variant. On the other hand, the Tesla Model S, a much smaller family sedan, comes in at over four and a half thousand pounds. Thus, for a semi designed to haul heavy cargo, this seems like an insurmountable problem. But Tesla's engineering department dug deep for a solution. United States regulation dictates that a fully loaded semi with a trailer cannot weigh more than 80,000 pounds. Fortunately, this weight limit is increased to 82,000 pounds for electric semis. That being said, if your battery and cab weigh a lot, it means you can carry far less cargo, and carrying far less cargo is the opposite of what is needed. So how heavy is the battery? Well, Tesla won't tell us, but based on Elon Musk's tweets and very educated guesses, it is roughly 10,000 pounds. Factor in the weight of the cab and motors, the Tesla Semi is roughly six to 8,000 pounds heavier than a comparative diesel Semi. But since regulation allows it to weigh 2,000 pounds more, its cargo carrying capacity is reduced by only six to 8,000 pounds compared to its fossil fueled counterparts. Filled to the brim, the Tesla Semi should be able to haul about 44,000 pounds of cargo, which is almost 10,000 pounds lower than the maximum carrying capacity of most Class 8 diesel-powered semis. That seems like a massive disadvantage until you look closer at more relevant data. The Transportation Energy Data Book provides us with the average cargo weights semis are hauling, and the Tesla Semi should be able to carry almost 90% of loads. According to another Department of Transportation report providing data from weigh-in stations, average gross vehicle weights for semis range from 54 to 59,000 pounds, well within the Tesla Semi's capacity. All things considered, in real-world usage, the Tesla Semi's weight penalty with the heavy battery does not have a hugely negative impact. The bigger concern for most users, though, is usable range. Tesla in its presentation claims the Semi has a 500-mile range, but 
That might have been a tad optimistic. It has an incredibly low drag coefficient of 0.36 and uses a tri-motor powertrain with one highway drive unit and two acceleration drive units. So when cruising down the highway, the two acceleration drive units automatically disconnect, effectively making the semi use only one motor, the highway drive unit. When required to get back up to speed, the two acceleration drive units instantly re-engage. This is similar to cylinder deactivation technology that is prevalent in modern combustion engine vehicles, and it just makes the semi far more efficient as it reduces its energy consumption. Another key consideration in the semi's efficiency is regenerative braking. While regenerative braking in electric vehicles can be a whole video in itself, it's the process of using the electric motor instead of the brakes to slow down the vehicle with the resulting kinetic energy being captured by the motor and fed back to the battery pack. In short, regenerative braking adds range, and since it's a function of kinetic energy, the heavier the vehicle, the more range it actually adds. For a vehicle designed to carry loads, this is an advantage, ensuring the semi can get away with a slightly smaller and thus lighter battery pack. It's also a great reminder that for electric vehicles, range is more than just the battery pack and motor. It also includes software and regenerative functions. And that is a fundamental shift in vehicle technology and how we approach efficiency. But if you pay close attention to the 500 mile test drive video that Tesla released, the semi spends a very short amount of time at 60 miles per hour with most of the drive around 50 miles per hour. And with increased speed at load, the energy consumption is going to be far greater. A more realistic range would be somewhere around 350 miles at highway speeds of 60 to 70 miles per hour. Of course, regenerative braking does add range, and it is strongest while coming downhill. But the Tesla Semi also expends additional energy going uphill, and based on the graphs Tesla showed in the video, the extra energy spent going uphill is recovered going downhill. While this might seem disappointing, it's actually quite an achievement. Not losing any range for going uphill so long as you return to the same elevation you started from, that's a very reassuring thought for fleet operators. As far as range goes, trucking data tells us 80% of routes for semis are less than 250 miles. So while the Tesla Semi might not be ideal for that last 20% of long haul routes, it still makes sense for the vast majority of use case scenarios. The last piece of this puzzle is the charging infrastructure. With an 850 to 900 kilowatt hour battery, a standard Tesla supercharger just won't cut it. Charging such a large battery would take too long for a vehicle that needs to be on the road every day. Instead, a new 750 kilowatt mega charger has been developed that can charge these massive batteries 70% in an astonishing 30 minutes. But it's not as simple as pumping in way more energy. Tesla also had to develop the new V4 cable for the charger. It can flow up to one megawatt of energy and has special liquid cooled cables running through it to ensure things don't get too hot. All of this makes the Tesla Semi proposition a far more useful one. So useful that Tesla secured an order for 100 semis from PepsiCo. The food and beverage giant aims to reduce its emissions by 75% by 2030 and 100% by 2040, making it the perfect customer. And even though the first Tesla Semis were to be delivered in 2019, it was December 2022 when the first batch of 21 trucks were handed over to PepsiCo. They have now been in operation for the better part of a year at PepsiCo's Sacramento Bottling and Distribution Center, and based on a video released recently, have been performing better than expected. The Tesla fleet is running around 12 hours daily, delivering products between 8 to 12 destinations on a sub 100 mile route. Three trucks in the fleet are being used for longer hauls in the 250 to 450 mile range, which is very impressive. While PepsiCo hasn't released more details, it would be interesting to see what average speed and cargo capacity the long haul fleet is running at to achieve that 400 plus mile range. What they have told us though, is that for the past few months, the fleet has achieved an efficiency of 1.7 kilowatt hours per mile, which is the equivalent of 19.8 miles per gallon. How does that stack up to class A diesel semis? Well, any truck manufactured after 2014 is legally required in the United States to have a fuel economy of at least 7.2 miles per gallon. 
Some of the most fuel-efficient semis, like the Freightliner Cascadia Evolution and the Peterbilt 570 hover around the 10 miles per gallon figure. That makes the Tesla Semi almost twice as energy efficient. A big player like PepsiCo stepping up and deploying a fleet of Tesla semis is proof of concept that electric semis can be a part of our freight transportation equation. And now that we have real world data that they are much more efficient than their diesel counterpart, it's starting to make a lot of sense. And that's before you factor in lower maintenance costs that are a happy side effect of electric vehicles. This is the big budget push that we needed to shake up the industry, and it's gotten off to a splendid start. So what can we expect going forward? With governments bringing the full weight of legislation to encourage electric vehicle adoption, it's safe to expect the Tesla Semi won't be the last we see of electric big rigs. Major vehicle manufacturers already have a few offerings in the market, but with the head start Tesla has in battery technology, they have some catching up to do. The Volvo VNR Electric, Freightliner E Cascadia, and Peterbilt Model 579 EV all have a sub 300 mile claimed range and charge up to three times slower than the Tesla. That being said, fleet operators tend to insist on pilot purchases that extend into years before committing to purchasing at scale. But with regulations snapping at their heels, they might be forced to jump into it quicker, and at that point, they will likely stick to manufacturers they already have trust and working relationships with, as opposed to newcomers like Tesla. And that makes this first batch of Tesla semis with PepsiCo even more important. You can be certain that fleet operators and companies are paying very close attention and following every single update to decide whether this is the one for them. Another key change we can expect to see is charging infrastructure becoming a fundamental component of planning when purchasing electric semis. Since there is no refueling at gas stations anymore and charging such a large battery pack takes a lot of power. PepsiCo says it took them two years to incorporate all they needed into their Sacramento plant, and it's going to be a priority for them moving forward. On Tesla's end, they are reportedly planning to build nine semi-truck charging stations along an 1,800-mile route from California to Texas, potentially doing for the semi what the supercharger network did for electric cars. So is this the death blow to diesel Class 8 semis then? Well, not yet. The Tesla is much more efficient, and the lack of a transmission makes driving it a far more relaxing job, but there are some tasks its combustion engine counterparts can do that Tesla can't. While the Tesla Semi's 500 mile range is impressive, it pales in comparison to some diesel semis with a range of around 2,000 miles thanks to much larger fuel tanks. And while legislation prevents drivers from being behind the wheel for longer than 11 hours, they can have teams of drivers ensuring once the truck departs, it can drive non-stop to its destination. Besides, there is the question of charging infrastructure, which is vital to the success of electric semis. But change is never comfortable or easy, and Tesla has made a bold but warranted move in this space, and they are once again in a position to potentially revolutionize an industry that isn't quick to change. With multiple companies having placed orders for Tesla semis and production scheduled to ramp up by late 2024, you might be seeing a lot more of these silent land barges on the road soon. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.